Live. Then two weeks ago, Sulawesi had their earthquake. Um, unlike Lombok's earthquake, the government of Indonesia said that they would accept international aid. And so, of course, many, many international NGOs go there and they've changed their mind. And this is the Indonesian way it happens. They've changed their mind and everybody was sent away. And we don't really know what's happening there. Well, we've had to get a little bit creative. We have this boat coming. We sent 12 tons of aid to Bali from um, another island called Sumbala. Um, so, that aid has got to a boat. They took eight hours last night filling it on with dinghies, just from the dinghy over to the boat. Sailed for 20 hours, the boat's almost here. And we're gonna put another two tons of tools on that boat so that people can go ahead and rebuild their own homes when they're out of the emergency phase. We also have nine and a half tons of rice on that boat and five 8,000 liter water reservoirs. So we're pretty excited. Um, yeah, so we found a way to get things to Sulawesi. And it continues. Mm, I'm really glad I had to sleep last night because I'm not looking forward to a whole lot of staff with all the stuff. One kid can do one village. Yeah, they all get together and work at the And they all get together and and you'll have like 20 people working on one house and they just move down the villages. Exactly. Exactly. And it brings people together too that may have lived separately in the past. So it's really nice. Waiting rain is coming, so that we've converted this into Indonesian, so you've got the Indonesian ones, and they're okay. all in all the bags. Um, no one will help you, you must save your family yourself. It's a really good point. The government's not going to help them, they'll, they'll save it for you. But, uh, be positive, be strong, go to Royal and always work together. And then, um, so it's very easy to clear old house with tools, big hammers, bolt cutters, that's what they haven't got, big hammers. They're not used to even swinging them, they used to swing in. Um, farm things, you'll see them swinging a hammer at first and they're all like, but they, it, it happens very naturally, you know. Um, meters may be confused, rain is coming, all will be mud, dysentery, disease, malaria, big problems in tent counts. Eight pound hammer's only 50,000, you know, so they're saying to aid agencies how cheap it is, so they can order it or they can get a hold of us and we can get tools to them. Um, and bolt cutters, 20 bucks um, for a small peel like you've got. And then that just shows the rain here. We, we, when we came here, we saw them in the, the tent camps, and then the government were building those toilets. And I just said to them, hey, just up here there's a school with five toilets, why don't you use this? We've had guys who worked at night when we gave them the tools under light. They got the tools, and at six in the morning they cleared the tools. Five in the morning they cleared the tools. The ladies were lining up from five to ten in the morning just for three to decent toilets. The other ones aren't decent. These are concrete padded toilets for water. We put another six in the end state because the apart from the some of the places where the soil's bad, you'll find that all the toilets, septic tanks are already there. They're fine. Um, so break break down the old house and recover the house pad and toilet. The toilet is the is the prize. Um, work together, break down homes and dangerous structures and high walls. Be careful, clear dangerous debris. Use ropes to pull down. Ropes are really important for pulling them down. Recycle free materials. So we went to government meetings, and after the meeting with um, our interpreters and all that, and not us, we, we were, we had the very big people going in with us. They still didn't understand that these houses are free. There is nothing needed that they need, you know. 
So the big point in the here is it's all free. So these these windows and everything are popped out. The recoverables are huge, you know. Um, save all the old Macaras. Recover squat at 70%, septic 90%, wood 80%, roofing on 100%, bricks 50% if they want them, windows and doors 70 steel 80 beds and nails and wire and stuff. It's all 60%. So the stuff can be fixed. The white brick I showed you. When this earthquake all started, it was delivering aid. So food, water, basically delivering rice and water is what we did for weeks. And it always felt like it was never enough. Um, people were living in tent villages and nothing was really changing. Um, aid was coming internationally, but it wasn't sustainable. Everything was, I don't know how to say it properly, scattered. Aid. So we came up with a plan. Um, our team has now spent over a hundred thousand dollars, produced close to a million dollars worth of aid with that hundred thousand. Um, so yeah, one of my team members said, if you see what you could do with stocks, you should see what we could do with aid money, which is so true. Um, and we have been providing kits and tools to villages so that they rebuild their homes with recycled materials. So what it's doing is it's cleaning up their home bases, they're finding their existing toilets, they're getting out of these tent camps which are full of disease, and they're actually rebuilding their own homes again. So it's really nice with the tools that we provide for free. Um, when they finish building the villages with their tools, they seed them onto the next village and they teach them how to do that as well. So it's, it's working out pretty good, we're excited. but it was very scattered and not sustainable, as I've said before. And so we walked into the office of Colonel Farad and we told him our idea and what we wanted to do on the island. And I'll let him tell you a little bit about what we've done. Yeah, uh, thank you, Amanda. Uh, this program, for the first time, is very difficult to implement because people does under don't understand what should they do with all these tools. But when we work with Lombo Heroes team, and we introduce this to Rampe area in uh, in Ganga and Kayangan, then people understood how to do with these old tools. And now we already built so many uh, temporary houses, and we already returned refugees from their tents to their own house. Maybe now it remain only seventy three thousand refugees from four hundred. By Rich TV Live.